Hi there guys, so do you want to use your server to help fight against the coronavirus? Let's see how. So of course we've all heard about it. The coronavirus has hit our world and it's spreading. Everywhere we look, there's news about it. Some things say one thing, and some things say another. So in these strange times, it really is quite scary, and it's easy to feel small and helpless. So just what can we do? Well, it goes without saying that we should follow the advice that we're given, and to take as many precautions as possible to stop the virus from spreading. But that's not what this video is about. Our scientists all over the world are doing their very best to come up with a vaccine and antiviral drugs that could be used to combat this virus. But we can actually help in that fight without being a scientist or medical professional. We can help by donating our CPU cycles to be used collectively to help research groups model protein structures, the results of which can help guide the design of vaccines and antiviral medications. Now it was Spencer from Lime Technology who reached out to me about this this last weekend. And I followed his guide and set it up on my server to join in the fight. So that's what this video is about. It's going to show you how to set up a container in order to do this. And you can see here there's three containers. Two for Boink and one for folding at home. Boink was developed by the University of California Berkeley and actually stands for Berkeley Open Infrastructure for Network Computing. And Folding at Home was developed by Pan Laboratory with Sony, Nvidia, ATI, Joseph Coughland and Cauldron Development. And Folding at Home, well it stands for, well, it stands for Folding at Home. And we can use any of these two programs to help join in the fight against the coronavirus. So which one to choose? Well, basically, if you want to use your CPU to do the work, then use Boink. But if you want to use your GPU and have that do the work, then you want to use Folding at Home. So first let's set up Boink and see how to do that. So at the moment these three containers are at the top of community applications, but it might not always be like that. So I'm going to do a search for Boink. And you can see here we've got two containers. Now I'm going to install the RDP Boink because I don't want to have to use a separate client to connect to it. This one's got it all built in. So click onto the install to install it. And the template is really easy to set up. The only thing we need to fill in is a port number by which to connect. I'm using 8097 because loads of my ports are in use and I know that one isn't. So click on to apply to pull down the container. Okay, so now that the container's downloaded, we need to sign up for an account. So open a new tab and do a search for Boink Rosetta. And then here at the Rosetta at home, open the web page. And in the top right hand corner, we can sign up for an account. So here, give yourself a nickname, put in an email address, obviously choose a password, confirm you're not a robot, and then click create account. Okay, so here we can see an overview of our account. Now on the right hand side, under community, we can see team. So click on where it says find a team, type in the keyword unraid and then click on to search. Now from the search results you see the unraid team at the top. So click on to where it says unraid and here you can see all the other team members in the unraid team who are taking part. So to join the team in the middle click on to join this team. Ok so now you can see that you're a member of the team. Under community now it says that you're a member of the unraid team. So now with that done, we're ready to go back to the Docker page and open the Boink container. On the Docker tab, click the icon and then go to Web UI. And that will bring you to this screen here. Just click on to OK and then you'll come to a screen where it says Add Project or Account Manager. We want to add project, so just click on to Next. Now here, pull the slider right down to the bottom. The project we want is called Rosetta at Home. Select that one and click Next. OK, so here we have the option to create a new user. We don't want to do that, we want to use the existing user we just created. It's a member of the Unraid group. So we need to put in our email address here, and our password, and then click on to Next. 
It will then say it's communicating with the project and the project's been successfully added. So with that done, we can click on to finish. And you can see here it says processing suspended and that it's running some benchmarks on the server. Now it's waiting to connect to the servers so it can download some work. Here we are, it's downloading the work from the server now. Okay, so now the work started, we're crunching numbers and helping in the project. Okay, so on the management window here, there's various settings which we can change. But I normally click suspend before I make any changes. I found if I don't do this, it can be quite slow, changing from kind of window to window. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is click onto tools here and go to computing preferences. This section gives us a few different options. We can choose if we want to restrict the work being done between various times. And we can do the same thing for when it connects to the internet. Here we can choose how much disk space this program is allowed to use. And here we can choose our CPU usage. I'm going to choose 80% here. OK, with my changes made, I'm going to click on to Done. If you're wondering why it says it's communicating with a Boink client, that's because there are two things in this container. There's the manager, which is like the web UI, and there's the actual client which does the work. And the Boink manager just allows us to speak to the Boink client. OK, so another thing here, if we click onto the view at the top here, we can go to Advanced View, which gives us a few more features. Now here you can see that it says there's a newer version of Boink available, but we can't actually update it from here. The whole container has to be updated by the maintainer of the container. OK, so if you click onto Projects, there'll be a list of projects that you're a member of. I'm only a member of the coronavirus one, and it says the team I'm a member of and my account name. Under Tasks here, this is all the tasks that are running on the client. At the moment they're all suspended because I just clicked Suspend earlier. Transfers, this will show up any transfers that may be happening to and from the actual main Boink server itself and your computer. In the advanced view now, if we click on to Computing Preferences, we get a few more options than we had before, but basically it's pretty much the same, but just with expanded options because we're in the advanced view. Okay, so again, if you make any changes, just click OK. Now I'm just going to go back to the simple view, so click on View and Simple View. Okay, so with my changes done, I now want to resume the work. So now with the work running again, I just want to show you something. On the Unraid dashboard, you can see my processors here. They're spiking up to 100% and then going back down. Now I think the reason for that is in this container, when I'm setting it to 80% usage of the CPU, it's using the CPU for 80% of the time. So that's why it's spiking high up and then going back down. Now, because we're running Boink in Docker, we can actually manage the resources in a much more efficient way. I'm going to just stop the container and go to the Docker tab. And now I'm just going to edit the template of the container, making sure it's on advanced view. And then I'm going to pin the cores, which I want the container to be able to use. So now with that modification made, if I go back to the dashboard, I can see now that the container is only using those bottom six cores. Now I've got Boink running on one of my other servers as well. On that server, I haven't restricted it at all. It's allowed to use all 16 cores. So anyway, that's how to set up this container. It's pretty easy to do. So come on guys, come and join the Unraid team. And then once you've had it running for a couple of days, go back to the Rosetta at Home webpage and then log in. Then go to the Unraid team here, and if we scroll down here, we can see how many total members there are. We've got, at the moment, 789 members, of which 485 are active. And the members with credit, we've got 493. So if you click onto View here, you better see the list. And these two guys here, these are pretty legendary. A hell of a lot of credit they've both got here, much more than the rest of us. And if we go on to the next page here, there's me. I'm quite proud that I'm on the second page, hoping to get on the first page. Now, it's quite addictive. It's like, you know, getting a high score in a game. It's always nice to see yourself going up the leaderboard. So as well as helping out a good cause, it's quite good fun as well. But if you don't want to be using your CPU to do these calculations, then you can use your GPU if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. But at the moment, I don't think the Rosetta at home doesn't have any actual support to be able to use GPUs at the moment. So if we want to use our NVIDIA GPU, we need to be using the container folding at home. Now before I go ahead and install it, I'm going to install another plugin first. On the Apps tab, do a search for GPU. Then just install the plugin GPU Statistics. 
Now there's one thing that you must be running in order to be able to use a GPU with a container and that's Linux servers, Nvidia and RAID build. Now I'm not going to be showing you how to actually install that. I'm going to assume that you've already got that installed and you're all ready to go. OK, so let's install the folding at home container. If it doesn't come up on the main page, then just search for it and download the container. Now on the template, there's a few more things to fill out than we had to do when we installed Boink. If we go down to the bottom of the template here, under NVIDIA driver capabilities, we're going to have to type in all. And then here where it says NVIDIA visible devices, we need to put in the ID number of our GPU. So on the settings tab, you're going to find the Unraid NVIDIA. So click onto the icon and then you want to copy the ID of your GPU. This is mine here. Then go back to the Docker template and paste the ID number in here. OK, so there's one more thing we need to put into this template and we can't actually see it on a basic view. So we need to toggle across here onto advanced view. Then we want to scroll down and where it says extra parameters, we need to put hyphen hyphen runtime equals NVIDIA. So with that done, we can scroll down to the bottom and click on apply and pull down the container. OK, so once the container is installed, we need to go back to the Docker tab and we need to actually stop the container. So with the container stopped, we're going to have to use a file browser and go to this location where the app data is for the container. Once we've navigated inside the folding at home app data folder, we're going to have to edit this config.xml file. Make sure that you're using a proper text editor to do so. I'm using TextMate on Mac, but if you're using Windows, then use Notepad++. So we're going to have to make some changes to this configuration file. Now the first thing we want to do is to change where it says GPU V equals false. We want to change that to true. Now the next thing you might need to change is underneath the line where it says following allows access from local network, you may need to change this IP address range. If we take a quick look at my server, you can see my IP address is 10.10.20.111. So that means my network range is 10.10.20. And then instead of the 111, I put a zero and then forward slash 24. That basically means everything from one to 254. So that's what I put in here. I put in 10.10.20.0 forward slash 24. Now I just want to make it totally clear. Don't just copy the numbers that I've put in here. My IP address range is quite unusual. So if your server IP was something like 192.168.0.100, in here you would put 192.168.0.0 forward slash 24. OK, so the next thing to change here is the username. So what you want to do is just give yourself a username. I'm using space. Now underneath you'll see it says passkey. Now this isn't 100% necessary to put anything here at all. But if you don't use a passkey, then the work that you do, if someone else has got the same name as you, it might not be able to be differentiated between the two usernames. The key basically is like your own personal identifier. And you can sign up for a key easily from this address here. So here just put in the username that you chose and your email address. Then just click on get passkey and one should be emailed to you. Now in fact I myself never got one sent through so I just didn't bother using it in the end. But if you use a passkey then just put it in between the quotations. Again here we need to put in our network range again. That's the same as what it was before. So just pop in your network range again. Where it says CPU use you want to leave that as medium. Don't change that line at all. But lastly here, we need to add an extra folding slot for the GPU. So basically you just copy the line above, but here put a one instead of a zero. And for type, that should be obviously GPU. So now you should have the second slot there with the ID of one and the type as GPU. Now don't get rid of the CPU line, that does still need to be there even though we are using just a GPU. So with those changes made we just need to save the file. And then with that done, back on the Docker tab we can start up the container. And once it's started, we'll open the web UI. OK, so that will bring us to this screen here. I found it took a long time for the work to actually start. I actually came back a few hours later to see it working, 
because within the first 5 or 10 minutes nothing seemed to be happening. You'll know when it's working when you see the green ball spinning round and to the right of that you'll see the progress. I'm at 20% at the moment. Now let's have a look at the dashboard. Now all of this CPU usage is actually from the other container Boink because I'm running both containers at the same time. Now I remember when I installed the GPU statistics plugin earlier. If we scroll down here we can see that the GPU is being used. We can see that the card's at 51 degrees at the moment. We can see its power draw and there is one session going on. Every now and then it's being throttled because it's taking too much power. So you can see a whole bunch of what's going on with the GPU. I find it really useful when using heavy GPU loads to better keep an eye on the temperature and things like that straight from the dashboard. Now I came back a little bit later and I saw that my temperature had gone up to 72 degrees Celsius. Now that actually kind of quite worried me a bit because I've never seen my GPU get that hot because the GPU is liquid cooled. Now it's 29% through at the moment and it's got another 1 hour 25 minutes to finish. So for me personally I'm not sure if I'm going to keep using the GPU all the time. I'm a little bit worried but me being worried about it kind of makes me feel guilty that I'm being selfish and not using the GPU. I don't know. We'll have to see. But anyway, there's two different containers that we can use that will help fight against the coronavirus. So guys, that's the end of this video. I just really want to say to all of you out there that I really hope you and your family stay really safe. These are really strange, horrible and scary times. So let's just hope that we can beat this damn virus soon. Anyway guys, I'm going to go to bed now. Take care and I'll catch you in the next video.